Here is a 2023 BMW XM in Dravid gray metallic over Shakir full Milano leather. This is all new. This is the first time that we're getting a twin turbo V8 plug-in hybrid that's going to slot between an X5 and an X7 with a slope roof design and a rugged profile. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides and out of the 19.2 lithium ion battery, you're going to be able to drive 31 miles without using any gas 46 mpge's combined but if you use that twin turbo v8 you're looking around 14 miles combined in the front you're going to have the same approach as all of the x series led daytime runnings and headlamps that brush into the gloss black everything's opened up to feed the twin turbo v8 with a new kidney grille it's more boxy a more wide fascia here and it all illuminates to give more of a futuristic design i am a fan of the m4 design hood because it really keeps that athletic approach and for a 49.1 50.9 weight distribution you're going to be taking this on the track underneath that hood is a 4.4 liter v8 twin turbo or m powered turbo producing 644 horsepower and 590 pound feet of torque paired to an eight speed steptronic automatic transmission for 24 they're going to have a label red which will have 738 horsepower zero to 60 in that bmw claims around 3.7 seconds here you're at 4.1 seconds which when you start looking at the msrp for the jump in price i think this is definitely going to be the sweet spot inside the gloss black wheel housing you're getting 23 inch multi-spoke alloy wheel six pistons are housed in the front this is in composite brakes the rear gets a single piston floating caliper and on the side skirts it bulges out so it gives a little bit of an off-roadsy approach for the side but i like how they pay attention to detail the xm badging gets the gloss black that wraps into the side window trims m spec side mirrors with led turn signals and projected puddle lights and the door handles gets this ripple effect that goes through it charging times is about 14 hours on a level one or a 120 volt seven hours will be a 230 volt or a level two bmw website says full electric is 30 but on the msrp sticker it will say 31 towing nearly 6,000 pounds m differential m adaptive suspension mx drive which is rear wheel bias this is going to have nothing but a luxury slash on track performance LED taillights. This is all sculpted and getting more dynamic. The first time ever vertical stacked quad exhaust tips. Everything gets the gloss black, the diffuser. I don't think I would cut into it, even though you can tow with this vehicle. BMW badging rework shark fin antenna power lift gate going into 18.6 cubic feet of storage. We have the XM bag that will hold your plug-in. 12 volt charger. There's no storage underneath the floor. Split fold the rear bench when you go to the rear doors at a 40-20-40 split. And that will increase cargo to 64.3, towing at 5,453 pounds. Let's go inside and start up this, rev it up so you can hear that exhaust note. Headroom is not going to be an issue in the XM. Legroom, same thing. You have deep and wide foot wells, even though it's a driver focused setup. The XM starts off with the soft materials and the carbon fiber. And I like the pattern that goes around the heads up display and the curve one panel with two screen layout, larger vents than the X7, ambient lighting that's going to go from the door panel into the dashboard and configure into the center with the carbon fiber that opens up into a wireless charging pad, the BMW digital key for the XM. 
with the USB 12 volt heated ventilated cup holders and the new key fob for the brand new XM. Carbon fiber is going to go all around with the leather for the shifter iDrive 8. Hey BMW, activate the air condition. All right, I will activate the air conditioning system. Wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio, Wi-Fi connection with 5G capabilities. Put it into reverse with a 360 degree reverse camera, full trajectory, and this comes standard with the driver assist. 3D view, you can use gesture when it works. Not wanting to work for me. You can also click onto the icons or use the mouse to just slide all around. Car wash view shows the trajectory in the front and we have the driving mode select. So when you do your setup, you could just simply put everything on sport, which is what we'll be doing for the drive. And you'll hear that active exhaust that will filter in. If you put it back to the comfort for everything, it should turn all that down. When you click into the M modes, you'll have your road and sport and your M hybrid will have electric and e-control and going into the gauge cluster we do not have the ar which would be in this content area here that you could put your navigation you can see the sound system but it does have the heads up display and you could do everything on the steering wheel that's multi-function with the m1 and m2 pedals in front and you get the carbon fiber paddle shifters three spoke leather wrap steering wheel m spec and the driver's side gets the carbon fiber that just pretty much puts the cherry on top. It's gonna to be soft where you rest your arms, open up inside, it's a deep storage pocket with another USB port. We get the Bauer & Wilkins sound system which has over 1400 watts, 20 speakers. This is three times more than the standard Harman Kardon. It's gonna be soft to touch pretty much everywhere, one touch up and down for the windows and a long storage pocket with a beverage holder carved out. No panel, but like I was showing you on the exterior, you have the ripple effect that goes through it. Heated armrest for the front, for the back seats, even though they do not adjust, they're comfortable. And a lot of headroom, the same thing with the leg room. You get storage behind both of the front seats with a USB port, dual climate control settings, heated rear seats, two USBs, a 12 volt, a storage tray, air vents on the side, no option for sun shades, but it's gonna be soft materials everywhere. And I like how they configured because you have a lot more storage and this goes deep for the back seat. Sliding into the center, the floor isn't completely flat, but the rails are pushed up. You have so much butt, shoulder and feet space because this is a wide interior. And for headroom, you can fit three adults over six foot tall. 644 horsepower, 590 pound feet of torque. This is no joke. Look at this. Oh. <laughs> Literally just took the breath out of me. That's the performance that you're getting out of this thing. It is insane and you can still tow with it. So you have plenty of your daily use and that fun to drive because it's a near 50, 50 weight distribution. Look at this. The exit. Oh. It's a sweet ride. Now it's gonna take me to some pros and cons, starting off with what I like about the XM. Besides the power, it's a hybrid, so if you are using that technology, you can get great MPGs. On the negative or con, it only gets 14 MPGs when you're using straight gas. So driving it like this, it's gonna drink a lot of fuel. I like the exhaust note that comes in. Unfortunately, it filters in through the speakers and that's the way BMW and all vehicles are more or less doing it. And another con I will say, because I have so much power underneath the hood, if I'm not where I can hear the exhaust note, meaning I don't have it in sport, I have everything in comfort like this, and then I, just let the car drive for itself. It's going to be hybrid more or less all the time, which 
I can't hear the exhaust filter in unless I push the gas pedal. Cool thing though on the heads up display is you can see this blue gauge RPM, which when it gets filled, then it engages the gas combustion engine in which you start hitting two to three RPMs. I like that we're still getting a V8 twin turbo, even though it's a plug-in hybrid because it is kind of the best of both worlds on the exterior. It's very dynamic. It has two different styles though. It looks athletic in the front and the rear then it looks like it's for off-road on the side i'm going to try to set it as straight as possible and give her a go and that's just in comfort but you can see what i mean you're already going 40 miles per hour before the engine kicks and then all of a sudden you hear this loud exhaust note which i love exhaust notes it's just weird something that you're going to have to get used to because this is the future for the twin turbo 4.4 liter v8 engine braking in it is good you got the six pistons in the front even with these larger wheels it's a comfortable drive you do hear a little bit of like an electric type noise that filters in but it's very airtight massage seats you would expect that soft closing doors so they're taking care of you with features and when you get this upgraded Bauer and Wilkin sound system it's no joke it's three times the power of the Harman Kardon with 20 speakers I'm not trying to sell it to you but as you saw in the interior it's definitely something to entertain when you're at these price points the back seat it's wide good for tall people it's an everyday blended vehicle with track performance going to some cons it doesn't come standard with the AR which will show you the camera in the gauge cluster comparing it to the IX M60 it's a significant increase in which the power to it is very similar especially with the 0 to 60 numbers now that one's going to feel more suv this one's going to feel more sporty so you have kind of a car feel for the front occupants especially the way the hood is designed i would have liked to see the hood with some more dimensions because where it's flat it does feel a little bit more luxurious in a con the ix m60 would be a bargain compared to this because you're getting basically the same zero to 60. anytime you're driving these cars you're going to get pulled over <laughs> it's just so fast it pushes you back it definitely gives you that fun factor in an everyday drive i would just leave it where you can hear the exhaust note even though i'm not getting great mpgs i don't expect it when i'm in a twin turbo v8 4.4 liter for me the ix m60i gives me the same feel but I kind of have a little bit more interior space in the front. I would probably purchase this over that because I'm not ready for full electric vehicles, but the charging times definitely will be a con because it does take quite a bit to charge it. But everything you're getting with it for a daily use car, track ready, it's really hard to say this is a bad car. I think BMW did an excellent job, especially configuring this motor with a putting a pretty large battery to it also so you know in the future you're going to get quicker times turn radius is what we're going to check we're also going to turn it into sport mode when we do so everything in sport turn radius now is going to get about two lanes not bad for over 200 inches <laughs> it's really hard to drive this without using full m modes and the seats are comfortable so you're not losing in that category where if you go to an x5 or an x4 it can get a little bit more tight these they're wide enough and they're long enough but let me know your thoughts in the comments and if you're new to the channel consider subscribing check out the next video merchandise website and instagram leave a comment and a like and i'd like to thank bmw of wesley chapel for giving us this 2023 bmw xm for our car review